lifestyle factors that contribute to bone health, whether that is um, weakening bones or strong bones. Some of these lifestyle factors you can change and some you can't. Some are gonna be surprising. We hear a lot with our members that they're very surprised at just what can affect bone health. So let's talk about the things that you can't change. Um, first, 80% of people who have osteopenia or osteoporosis are women. Women have a higher risk of osteoporosis than men due to low estrogen levels as they age, which protect bones. Women also tend to be um, a little bit lighter and more fragile framed. So that can affect bone density as well. About 65% of your bone health can be attributed to heredity. So if your mother or father had osteoporosis, you're at a higher risk yourself. As we age, there's a certain amount of natural bone loss. So the older you are, the higher you are, the higher risk you are. And finally, there's a number of medical conditions and medications that can affect bone. I'm gonna show you a list of the most common in a minute, and we can't do too much about these risk factors, but it is important that you're aware of them so that you can take extra steps to minimize their impact. So things you can change. There's a number of risk factors um, that you have control over. So getting enough calcium and vitamin D along with other nutrients, having a really good diet, supplementing when necessary, not smoking, limiting alcohol, increasing your physical activity, especially weight bearing activity and high impact exercise and remembering to improve your posture. And then before going on any medication, it's just really important that you talk with your doctor or pharmacist about any medications or medical conditions you might have that um, could be affecting your bone health just so that you are aware of that. So secondary osteoporosis um, is what we call bone, um, weakened bones caused by outside conditions, medical conditions or medications. I only show you this side so you have an appreciation of the large number of conditions out there that can affect bone density. And a lot of people are surprised by some of the conditions on this list. So if you're diagnosed with a chronic illness, you should ask your doctor what other illnesses may be associated with it. If bone density is a concern because of your gender or heredity, or you've, you've had a bone density scan and you have osteopenia or osteoporosis, you need to increase your prevention strategies. And again, cancer and cancer treatments can cause bone loss as well. So just be aware of these guys and just be sure to talk with your doctor. If any of these, if you have any of these things on this list or anything else that you might be concerned about that could be affecting your bone health. And again, secondary osteoporosis, these are medications that can also have a direct impact on your bone health. And again, I show you this slide just so you have an appreciation um, of some of the different medications because a lot of the medications that are on this list are very common for people to be taking and very common for people to be taking for many, many, many years having no idea that it could you know, ultimately be affecting um, bone health or um, lead to a diagnosis like osteoporosis. For instance, um, the PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, those are the medications for GERD, like Nexium or Prilosec, um, and then steroids are probably the two biggest culprits of secondary osteoporosis. And most people who are taking those medications have no idea until they're, they're ultimately diagnosed with osteoporosis. So just be aware of any potential medications and visit with your medical doctor about any options if you're taking some and you're concerned.